What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk, man. And today, we're not talking about celebrities, but we're talking about pick me's, all right? Now, pick me's are, this, you know, it's a term for women who are always trying to basically kiss up to men so that brothers will choose them, all right? And it happens in almost every community. Uh, you will see it, you know, in sports, we call them groupies, uh, in church, we call them, you know, choir members, church ladies, right? Women who are chasing after pastors, they're pick me's, but I want to deal with another group that has been around. I wouldn't say as long as the black church, but definitely they've been around a long time. That is the pan African community and the pan African community is so diverse, right? You have um, the Nation of Islam is a part of the Pan-African community or the Hotep or Woke community. You know, nations of um, God's earth, the 5% nation. You know, you have several sects of the black Hebrew Israelites. Shout out to those brothers over there. Uh, my brother, Captain Tazariak, I believe he's in one of the sects. You have brothers that are Hotep, Kemetic, you know, brother Sinetter. Shout out to Sinetter TV. You know, he deals with a lot of brothers in different um, areas. North American, Moorish. You have a whole bunch of different types of brothers that come to the Pan-African community. And again, shout out to my big brother, Sot Netter, who is one of the founders and pretty much bringing all of these kind of groups together to do debates, to, you know, you know, do things in the community and stuff like that, right? But what we do know is that just like churches, the Pan-African community and the Hotep community, even when you have chicks that come back to Africa, right? You know, you have certain black women living in Ghana that's African-American or whatever. These communities tend to be dominated by women. You know, you have some of your guys like Dr. Umar Johnson. Let's just use him. You know, a lot of his fans um, are women. Uh, there's a new young brother. He's not new, but you know, he's very popular. Has a very, very, very big following. Young Pharaoh, he's doing his thing. You know, um, I have had a chance to watch his live streams and he be, you know, the brother, the brother has a great following, right? On IG, he has a lot of female followers, right? You know, Brother Polite is another one that has a lot of female followers. A lot of these movements, you know, because some brothers say the black woman is God, and there's a big debate about that. Women are following and financially supporting the movement. Like Dr. Umar Johnson, he's accused of, you know, basically trying to fund his movement off of single mothers and stuff like that. I don't know how true that is, but you get the you get my point. So what tends to happen in you know some of the, these movements is that a lot of times sisters that would like to meet a brother who is woke you know because obviously we will all agree that white supremacy and racism has held black folks back and some sisters become woke right they, be, they, they come into the knowledge of the truth about the system and they may be exposed by one of these particular sects it could be you know through the hotep community it could be through the, the pro-black communities the nation of islam communities they come into the communities and they're looking for uh, a man with similar thought processes and that typically you know that's not going to be a christian guy right a lot of brothers are christian so they come into these sex s-e-c-t-s where brothers are supposed to be woke and one of the things that the sisters like to do is they like to call brothers king peace king you know brothers call ladies you know queens and stuff that's you know common knowledge and i'm not saying that all the time that this happens but let's be honest and some of the you know especially some of the conscious or woke circles you do have brothers that are academics, right? Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. John Henry Clark. You know, there's many different people that are, are also academics in the field. Brothers, I don't think Neely Fuller was an academic, but you know, we have a lot of people that were basically, you know, had some form of education in the pro-black community, right? But then we also got to address that, you know, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, who was a pediatrician, all right, an MD. Then you also have people though, who come into the Pan-African communities that are, you know, ex-cons, right? One of the more popular ones that we know, Malcolm X. You know, he came into the Nation of Islam, uh, was a, you know, a, you know had, had um, that trouble with the law. Elijah Muhammad also had trouble with the law. And a lot of brothers who come and revitalize their lives are former drug dealers. Um, they are former gang members, uh, like Brother Polite. He was a former Crip um, out in the in New York area. You know, some other people have problems with the police before. Then here's the situation. The sisters that come into their, these particular communities, they are basically attracted to these guys because they have the gift gap. And what they probably think is, you know, I'm a, you know, 
basically treat him, you know, call him king or whatever. And what they try to do is because the brothers are talking about building in the black community, they're talking about treating black women like a queen, the sisters start getting attracted to that and start giving up the you know what to these brothers, right? And then once they give up the goods to the guys, and the guys use them, they then start being mad, right? Because, you know, wait a minute, I came into the conscious community and this nigga just screwed me over like I was somebody else. But there's a sister that made a video about this, right? I wanna play her take on it because she has a message for the pygmies in these pan-African circles, you know, trying to basically force a, a, a pro-black brother into a relationship. Let's go ahead and play that clip and I'ma let her speak on it. It is brothers that are working on themselves and they are seeking out assistance in their journey and they are getting bolder in their evolution if you do not mean these men well stay the f away from them don't be f them up don't be tempting them with that f leave them alone let them heal because a lot of women be using this spirituality consciousness cosmics whatever whatever's to, to get some y'all be coming in all oh, blessings king um you know highest praises king i see the god in you all because you want some and then when he break your heart, then, you know, niggas ain't shit all over again. Nah, he was just a king, remember? Remember, it was just hotel ble blessings, king. Ha blessings, king. You such a god. Then when he dozed through your ass because he ain't ready for that and you keep pushing that on him. And your heart broke the up. Get off of him. Don't be bashing him. Leave him alone. All right, as you brothers heard, man, the, the sister, she was saying some powerful things, right? And I think that a lot of times sisters, when they come into these Pan-African, you know, some of these situations where, you know, they're woke, they feel like, you know, that these brothers are not going to be like everybody else, you know, because these brothers are talking about fighting against the sister, fighting against the white man. The black woman is the only woman for me. No white woman over here for me. And they talk that nonsense, right? One of the guys that talks all the time is Dr. Umar Johnson. And I'm just bringing him up to clarify because he's heavily against interracial relationships and I can understand that. But Dr. Umar Johnson has two kids, I believe, or more, by two different women. And, and from my, what I've been told is he refuses to pay child support. He's not married to any one of his um, children's mother. He is known as a brother that is a womanizer in the pro-black circuit. And so when they get involved with somebody like him and they don't get it, and you know, and something happens, they get upset. And this is the same situation that a lot of sisters, when they go to the black church, you know, or they change their life and they become our hotep or pro-black or pan-African, they still are looking for the same qualities in the guys that they were looking for in the previous life. You know, you, you're trying to force a guy to be in a relationship with you based off your willingness to have sex with him. And like the sister was saying, a lot of brothers are not ready for that. Even in the pro-black circles, you know, a lot of these brothers are just, you know, some of them, you know, are, are, are doing the right thing, are doing cool. But, you know, and I'm not going to label all of the brothers because we have powerful brothers in these circuits. But, you know, some of the brothers in there, there's, there's F boys in every circuit. You not being able to choose a good black man, if you can't do it in the Christian church, if you can't do it in, you know, nation, you're not going to be able to do it anywhere. And trying to become a pick me so you can get used and take advantage of, it's pretty much going to hurt your cause. And many of us would agree. Most of the women that get it taken advantage of are getting it taken advantage of in the black church by pastors are in the pro-black circuits by pan-african pimps you know whoever you want to consider them to be that they're getting used for their cooch they're getting used for their money and then you want to complain about it but you think that you know you were just calling them king you were talking about how we gonna build how we gonna build on this and that and now you out there you know looking used up so i mean i just kind of wanted to drop that knowledge on you brothers man what do you guys think it's your boy o'shea duke jackson make sure that you like comment subscribe hit the bell check out the first comment with all my information pinned at the top uh you know i got my black men at perfect t-shirts check those out and as you know brothers the buffoonery always remains at an all-time high i'm out Thank you.